All right, this has been a big project here, but um, I replaced the shock tower with the spring assembly. I replaced the lower control arm, inner and outer tie rod with the boot. Lower ball joint was actually part of the lower control arm and engine mount because in order for me to remove the control arm there's two bolts that sit right there's one and the other one sits right back there right behind the engine mount and in order to get to that bolt you have to disconnect the mount and move it out of the way so it was about seventy dollars from ebay to order all four motor mounts about uh sixty dollars for both front left and right uh, control arms with the lower ball joint also on ebay uh, about another maybe forty fifty dollars for the inner and outer tie rods and then all four shocks i bought for about three 350 340 somewhere around there uh, with everything done so pretty much everything is getting replaced except for the um, sway bar link here uh, with the ball joints which would be an easy repair later this all together probably cost me about five six hundred dollars for the entire front end with motor mounts complete motor mount set both left and right control arms left and right inner and outer tie rod ends with ball joint lower ball joint and the bushings uh pretty much got a whole front end with motor mount set for about five 500 bucks shipped to my house uh i spent maybe three or four hours last night tearing this all apart and uh it's just the three bolts there two bolts here that attach this to the lower control arm and then uh the brake line disconnect from there the sway bar disconnect from there that one's kind of hard to get to um, but pretty much remove the lower ball joint from here and then uh, disconnect the boot and there's a uh, like a washer keeper thing and then uh, let's see if I have the parts actually I do here's the old parts here's the lower control arm I had to separate the ball joint from there that bushing was actually pretty worn out you can see it's put in the sunlight here it was cracked pretty bad it wasn't horrible but it was to the point where I needed to replace it and then two out of the four motor mounts uh, the motor mounts seem okay uh, and the hardest one was actually the front one. This is the front one because I see the little arrow there. This is the the left, which is the driver's side. So it's three points of contact there, and the one with the little keeper there, and then this is the upper one. Everything looked good, um, but I, I'm replacing them all. Like I said, it was a whole kit. Um, here is the other motor mount brand new in the box this is the old steering so I'll show you this is the boot you got your tie rod there goes to the outer this is the outer from here out this is the inner and then the inner connects right there and this there's a washer that sits over here with a little keyway that keeps this in the position and then when you tighten this on you bend the washer over and it keeps this from spinning off like a uh, keeper and then you just flatten it back out and I, I know there's a specific tool for this to take this off but uh, this thing just flops around so it tells me there's a lot of play there's I mean I can hear the play inside of there um, and then this is the lower ball joint, which was starting to wear out as well. Actually, that's really worn out. I could feel the slop in there. And uh, there's the boot. So this is the brand new set for the other side. There's a boot with 
the retainer clips, which I only needed the one because I'm using the factory. Sorry, I got the sniffles here and I'm hanging upside down a little bit. There's a little spring spring clip right there. I'm just reusing that factory one because I like that one better than those. But the other one is kind of a pain. So I don't know if you want to use a zip tie to tighten that boot on instead of these little clips. But uh, I did buy the tool that crimps down on these. This is the old one. And I just figured I kind of tweaked it a little bit, taking it off with a flathead screwdriver. Um, it was probably easier to just replace it versus one of these, which is actually what I used. I don't know why they give you two, but I think the technique is you pull this and it shrinks the diameter down and then you bend it over and lock it in and it seems to hold it. Worst case, I guess, a zip tie. The cool thing about this kit, I can, if you guys are interested, I can add the, the links to all the stuff that I bought. I doubt you have the same car, but I just did a quick search on eBay and, and look specifically for what I needed. But they come with the the keyways, the spring clip, uh, what are these called? Cotter pins. And, uh, okay, there's that ring right there. This is the one that locks in at the end of that shaft. And you can see how rigid that is. It's not even moving. When I stuck it in there, the old one hung down, like, just swivels down. This one stays where you put it, and it's kind of rigid, solid, whatever. And then there's the outer tie rod with another cotter pin. And then uh, the motor mounts. And I got the other control arm and shocks coming in. Sorry, that's getting annoying here. But uh, I'm going to keep going now. i got to tear this side apart. And i got to tear into this side. So there's the inner outer tie rod. Motor mount. i got to disconnect that. This is the old one. And then uh, control arms coming out. And the lower ball joint as well. That's going to come out. If I can get it all at one piece, I will. But you can see how much stretch is on these things. And... This is a 2005, we're in 2023 right now, so that has definitely seen some wear and tear uh, over the years. It's the factory one, so it's time to refresh it. Uh, if I can replace anything else, I would have. Um, I'm pretty much at the point where everything else is accessible at any point later on. So I'm going to keep going.